Welcome to the fourth part of my Blender Fluid Simulation Tutorials. Today we're going to be working with Outflow. This is the scene that we're going to be making. As you can see, the water stops filling at the bottom of the container, basically getting rid of all the water that it runs into the faces that you cannot see here. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. The first thing we do is going to go ahead and click on our starter cube and we're going to hit S to scale it and then Shift C and then 8. Maybe not 80. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and hit Tab, go into Edit Mode, and we're going to select these four vertices by clicking H1 and then hit in holding Shift and hit I to inset. And we're just going to bring it in a little bit. E to extrude on the Z axis and bring it all the way down. Just going to check and make sure that it's pretty good there. You don't want it to be too close to the floor there because if it is you can have a little bit of issues with the water seeping completely through so you want to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of room there. All right. Next thing we do is going to hit shift and D to duplicate this object. And then we're going to bring it up here and then we're going to scale it by let's do 0.4. Doesn't look too bad. And we're going to stretch it on the x-axis a little bit that way. And then we're going to go ahead and bring in our domain. So we're going to bring in a cube by hitting Shift A and selecting Cube. We're going to hit S8. I'm going to hit 3 on the numpad there to get into right view. I'm going to bring it up right to about there. All right, perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and move this object to the corner about there. And let's go ahead, since you've got to select it, go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to press A to deselect everything. And then I'm going to press Control R for a loop cut. And I'm going to scroll up on your mouse wheel to get one extra cut. I'm going to click and then I'm going to right click to leave it where it's at. Then I'm going to go ahead, if you're in wireframe mode like this, you can hit C for circle select and then middle mouse click to deselect all of these. naming us with just those two vertices. And we're going to grab those and we're just going to bring them on down. I'm going to get out of edit mode. And we're actually going to go ahead and get out of wireframe mode. Let's select our block, click the object information tab, come down to maximum jaw type and select wire. There we go. Now we're going to go back to this object. I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface on here. I'm going to bring that to two, but we're going to raise the render to three. And we're going to do smooth shading. Go back into edit mode and we're just going to go ahead. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But I'm going to go ahead and add some loop cuts to kind of sharpen it up a little bit. Still going to have it a little bit rounded, but not as much. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and with this object selected, press Shift S, and we're going to bring the 3D cursor to the selected object or the origin of the object. That way, whenever you bring anything in, you'll have it up here. It makes it a little bit easier. Shift A, going to go ahead and bring in our cylinder, and we're going to go ahead and rotate it by pressing R, X, and we're going to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And then we're just going to scale it on down. And then we're going to go ahead and scale on the y-axis to make it a little bit bigger. Because right, you're going to go ahead and go back into edit mode for this object. And we're going to extrude it just a hair down to give it a little bit more thickness. We're going to press A twice to select all of this. And we'll press Control N to flip our normals around. And normals are basically the way that the faces are on these objects, which way they're facing. And the reason why I extruded this versus solidify is sometimes, not always, but sometimes the solidify modifier will affect the way the water simulation or fluid simulation actually works. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is gonna go ahead, and we're actually gonna press Shift S again and bring the cursor back to the center here. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring in another cylinder and we're going to repeat it. We're going to rotate it on the X by 90 degrees. 
Then we're going to scale it on the x by 8. Actually, let's scale it on the y by 8. Actually, I'm going to bring it back just a hair. That way it didn't stick out of the box there. I'm going to go into wireframe mode, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and go into tab while selected on the cylinder. Deselect everything, and then we're just going to highlight these bottom vertices and press X to delete them. Pressing A to select all the vertices, and we're just going to bring it on down there. Now we are going to add a solidify modifier to thicken it up. I'm going to do 0.1, and we'll just apply it. We cannot apply things in edit mode. And then the last object we're going to bring in is going to be our cube. And we're going to bring it over there and we're going to scale it on the Y by 8. And it's going to be a little bit different than the video I first showed. I'm going to raise it up to here so that where the water won't stop right here when it hits this face. It'll come underneath here and then it'll start to dissipate as it hits this bottom face here. Let's go ahead and scale it on the Y a little bit, bring it inside that box. That's better. Okay, so now all we're going to do is go ahead and set up all of our objects. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our domain by clicking Fluid and Domain. I'm going to change the resolution to 200 and I'm going to max out the preview. And then we're going to go ahead and change our time to 10.2, which is about equivalent to the amount of frames. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this a fluid obstacle. And I'm going to do the same thing here, fluid obstacle. We are actually going to change it to both. And then I take that back. We're going to make this one an obstacle and we're going to set it to both. And this one is fine being volume. And not to go into too much detail, but basically it depends on the mesh. So I did do a video on what all of that means. It's not terribly hard, but if you reference the first tutorial I did, it explains it in a little bit more detail. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this fluid as our outflow, so whenever the water hits these faces, it will dissipate the water and it will disappear. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our inflow. Excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and set the Z to 0 0.2 and the Y to 0 0.4. Alright. And I mean the X to 0 0.4. Okay, so basically this is the flow direction for the fluid itself. So it's going to go up a little bit and it's going to go out this way a little bit. And when you increase this, you actually increase the flow rate as well. So if this were zero, it wouldn't come out as fast as if this were 0.4. So you can end up with more fluid than you were expecting if you were to crank this up to 10 or something quite ridiculous. Okay, so let's go ahead and bake this. Uh, you would have a cube normally in your scene, but this was from a previous bake. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and start baking it. Now let's go ahead and start setting up our scene while we wait for that to bake. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to cycle render. I'm going to hit shift Z to go into a rendered view. Let's go ahead and change our world settings. Let's click use nodes and I'm going to do a sky texture but I'm going to turn off the view for the camera by going down to ray visibility and unchecking camera. This cube, we can actually just press H to hide. And then we're also going to hide it from the render, which is right here. And the same thing with our cylinder here. I think it's this cylinder. No, it's this cylinder right here. We're going to go ahead and hide that and hide it from the render as well. So then the only thing we have is the fluid showing here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up our box. We're going to actually bring out a second window here. And then we're going to go to our Materials tab and use Nodes. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to go ahead and use the Node Editor. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, bring in a principled shader. I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down to surface. 
Shift A again, and we're going to bring in a displacement map. I'm going to go ahead and hook that up to our displacement here. And then I do not remember exactly how I set up that original one. I made that a few, quite a few days ago. I think it was a wave. I'm going to plug, plug our color into our height. There we go. And you can kind of see what's going on already here. So we're going to kind of mess with this a little bit. Actually, I'm going to change this to rings and saw. There we go. Let's see if we can get some distortion in here. Bit too much here. And, and really, you could play around with it as much as you like. Uh, I actually quite encourage it to not do it the way I do it. Take the roughness down. Let's see if we bring the scale the other way. No. There we go. That's actually pretty close to what I originally had. We're going to go ahead and bring the scale up and get a little bit more of a super defined, very reflective look. All right, well, that was pretty easy. Okay, so with this one, the cylinder, I didn't do anything fancy. I think I just slapped a little orange on there. Not bad. Okay, now we're going to select our lamp. We're going to go ahead and just hit sun to really bring out some color. Actually, that's not too bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit zero on the numpad to bring us to camera view. We're going to hit shift F and we're going to move this out. And it moves with your W, A, S, D keys. And then Q is up. And actually, I think I have it backwards. Q is down, E is up. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this second window. I'm going to go ahead and click our fluid. Scrub through the timeline and make sure everything looks good so far. Not too bad. All right, so let's go ahead and click on our fluid. I'm going to hit new, and this is just going to be a simple glass shader. Although if you were to do glossy, like I just accidentally clicked, you could kind of some cool effects. Uh, you can do that as well. You can even add different notes to it to really, really make it really neat. And some of the basic notes, let's go ahead and do that while we render a few more scenes. If we were to go to our note editor here, and add in, say, a Vornell uh, Vornell texture here. I'm going to plug that into the color. You can kind of see how you get a really cool looking effect just from that. I mean, it's, it's not bad. You might want to raise the roughness up a little bit, though. I'm more of a glass kind of guy though, so we're going to go ahead and just exit out of this and go ahead and change it to glass. We're going to change the ORI to 1.334 because that's pretty close to water. We're going to get rid of the roughness and we're going to get rid of our vanilla. Actually, let's change that to a little bit of a blue color. No, it's not realistic, but it's not too bad. Let's go through the timeline and see what it looks like falling down. Nobody said water had to actually be blue. And that really pretty much does it for this scene. Uh, I'm gonna go through some quick render settings. You notice we have a lot of these white speckles and this is coming from glossy surfaces or transparent surfaces. And when you have a bright light like a sun, it will bounce everywhere and you'll get a lot of weird glowing, uh, they're called fireflies. I mean, this scene isn't too bad. This isn't terrible. This may not even go away. But to get rid of that, go down to sampling, change your clamp direct to one and your clamp indirect to one as well. And you notice how they're dramatically lessened if not completely gone. When it comes to your samples, what I always suggest people do is render out a frame. When you render out a frame, you can actually go ahead and click on, oh, it's not here. I have to actually render out a frame. So let's go ahead and hit F3 and we're just gonna, I'm sorry, F12. We're gonna render one frame out real quick. 
and you notice down here where it says slot one. So if you wanted to figure out how to make it the most optimal, render another frame. So hit slot two, change your render samples here to say something like 65. Then hit F12 again to render. And you can actually use these two to compare it. Now the shortcut key I believe is F. Nope, I was wrong. Is it J? Yeah, there we go. Second time's a charm. So if you hit J, it actually will bounce between the two slots. And it will even show you the time difference. Well, at 65 frames, it rendered in almost half the time. And you can bounce back and forth and you can see the difference. Well, there is, there is some difference on the frames. Normally speaking, most water scenes, you could do it about 80. And you will notice that it's almost indistinguishable between 120 and 80. So from this distance, I can't even really tell the difference between one and three. So that right there ends up saving quite a lot of time, especially when you're doing it across 250 frames and whatnot. So with that being said, you go ahead and crank it here and then just use your typical rendering settings. Other than that, I hope everybody enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.